hello welcome to our channel my name is Kat and I am the creator of the Cheapskates Club where our goal is to live life debt free cashed up and laughing if this is your first time visiting us welcome and if it's not welcome back who do we have tonight we've got oh some comments already let me go and we'll see Yvonne what's first Early bird, Yvonne. Hello, Fiona. Um, sure, I might have crossed over on channels. Doesn't matter. Um, we haven't changed YouTube channels. I'm just on the other one. Don't panic. I'll address this matter in a moment. I've been putting out fires all day. Um, hi, Jenny. Um, Home Among the Gum Trees is my other channel, Fiona. Um, all right, let me see. It should be on. It should be on Cheapskates, but anyway, that is my fault. Let me see what I can find. Okay, no, it's coming up over here. I don't know why. And really, right now, I don't want to be bothered. Um, right. Um, hello, Sylvia. Hello, Dijon. Hi, Kelly. And we are among the gum trees, such as they are at the moment. All right. Um, it won't show in two places, Yvonne, and it's too late for me to change it. So it'll just be a small group tonight and I will transfer it over later. I've been putting out fires all day because someone in their wisdom has decided that we've been hacked. We have not been hacked. We have never been hacked. My mailing lists have never been hacked. My website has never been hacked. Our forum has never been hacked. I have a rough idea of who it is. I've sent an email asking them to stop. And if they don't, I've talked it over with Wayne and I'm full up to pussy's bow with all this nonsense. People don't like cheap skates. That's fine. Move on. If you don't like us, good chances we don't like them. But honestly, this nonsense about spreading rumours and creating drama is frankly giving me a headache and I'm over it. So, and you can tell I'm quite cranky. <laughs> I'm very cranky. It's got to stop. So I will be addressing that in this week's newsletter too, just so everybody knows what's happening. But I can assure you, we have not been hacked. We have never been hacked, ever. We have really good security on our website. And I know it's really good because it costs a small fortune and it's very, very reputable. Anyway, I had a, a, for about, since about 11 o'clock this morning, all I've been doing is chasing this. And it's really, really bugging me. I've got better things to do with my time, folks. I want to create a really good show for you guys. So we're going to talk about the $300 a month food challenge because that's something that's come up just in the last week. And I know that we finished last show and I was going to continue on with our budgeting, but I thought you might all be a bit budgeted out and um, maybe, maybe um, want something different just for a change and then I had some questions about it and I was told that it's just not possible and I was told all sorts of things and then I had a journalist contact me and ask all sorts of weird questions so I thought we'd talk about $300 a month food challenge because we have been doing this for 20 nearly 29 years No, originally it was $200 a month. 
and then our kids grew and of course our circumstances changed because we've talked about this circumstances changed nothing is set in concrete and so I was able to boost the budget and I boosted it to $280 a month back in 2009 when I wrote Eat Well, Save More, its its tagline is Feed the Family for $80 a week. Um, I wasn't spending $80 a week. I was still just spending my $70 a week, but the tagline was $80 a week because I did include extra things in those meal plans. That was a long time ago, a long, long time ago. We're still doing it. Many of you are still doing it. You've taken on the challenge and you've made it your own. You're working it to fit your budget, your family's needs, your circumstances. We are all doing a wonderful job with this and our grocery budgets. And I'm sure that, you know, sometimes I look at it and I wish oh, maybe I could do whatever. And I'll take a step back and go, no, I'm going to leave it like it is because right now it's working. I'm not going to fiddle with it. If it's not broken, I'm not going to try and fix it. So I thought we'd address it because it is possible. Now, it's really, I was going to say it's difficult, but do you know what? It has always been difficult to feed a family on a budget, to feed a family tasty, appetising, healthy, easy and simple meals on a budget has always been difficult. It's a bit harder these days because a lot of the things that we used to fall back on like mints and lamb shanks and um, sausages have all of a sudden become gourmet and everybody wants them and so of course you know, the price goes up to match the demand. It's it's very expensive. Lamb is expensive. Lamb chops used to be cheap. Um, even stewing steak and gravy beef are jolly expensive. Ridiculous prices. So those old, old favourites that we used to fall back on to help stretch our budget, we can still use them. We just need to be a bit more discerning. Oops, there we go. See, everything's going wrong. Camera just fell over. Is it all right? Let me know. I'm not going to touch it in case it falls over again. No. Oh, it has been a shocker of a day. A shocker of a day. Anyway, look, we Armstrongs, we like our food. We like tasty food. We like plenty of it. And that's not to say that our portions are huge because they're not. We just like, if we're going to eat food, we like to eat it. Um, we're not a lettuce leaf and a slice of tomato type family. Um, we eat well. And that's something I'm very conscious of is making sure we get lots of veggies, lots of fruit in our diet. We eat more poultry than we do red meat these days, but that's through choice. And we throw in meatless meals. And most of the time, nobody knows that they're meatless. And often those meals or the scratch meals are really frugal, really, really frugal. I had to go to, I was going to at the weekend going somewhere and I was take, to take something for lunch. So I had zucchini and I had carrots and I had corn I had onion and I had eggs and a little bit of cheese. So I made a zucchini slice. Now the zucchini slice recipe I have just has zucchini, onion, cheese, flour and eggs oh, and a cup of oil. So a cup of oil is a lot of oil. That is a lot of oil. And... Oil is expensive. Even just vegetable oil is expensive. 
so I thought about cutting it down to half a cup and then I thought hey, it's still a lot of oil so I cut it down to a quarter of a cup of oil I didn't put in as much cheese as the recipe said I used five eggs um, because I cut back the oil and the cheese and they both work to bind and I added extra veggies so we had more zucchini carrot corn um, zucchini carrot corn onion I was going to put mushrooms in and then I thought you know what just now mushrooms are a bit touchy people aren't too fond of mushrooms so I left the mushrooms out but it actually made two of my big 10 inch quiche dishes full so I was able to put one in the freezer and take one with me for our lunch and it was jolly delicious guys really really nice so even with the extra veggies it actually cost less than making it according to the recipe because I cut back on the cheese which is expensive these days and the oil which is super expensive these days so it actually came in under what it would have been anyway and it was a really frugal meal it was about eight dollars I estimated it cost the zucchinis came out of the freezer the carrots were 80 cents a kilo a few weeks ago so they were just in the fridge and I used two the corn was a tin of corn out of our camping um, kitchen and it was just one of those no name tins I think they're about a dollar or dollar ten the eggs the flour a little bit of oil and a little bit of cheese and I really just put cheese on top of it and it was scratchy cheese too it was a little bit of mozzarella a little bit of tasty and a little bit of parmesan all mixed in it was a frugal meal but it was tasty and reasonably reasonably helpful there were worse things we could have had for lunch so it it fit within my grocery budget and quite easily too and when you are thinking about a $300 a month meal plan you do need to a uh, food challenge you do need to meal plan so that you can stick to that budget so you know how much each meal costs now you may have noticed sometimes in the newsletters when I'm sharing recipes and things I will put a cost or if there's a new article on our website I will put a cost but I don't um, do it as a rule because then then I get the complaints that so and so can't get whatever and they don't have the same prices and blah 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 it's my prices they're my prices they're what I pay unless you shop where I shop when I shop the way I shop buy what I do in the quantities I do and use it exactly the way I do use it your prices are going to be different that's just that's just a fact your prices are going to be different so it's a guide when we say $300 a month it is a guide it is not you can't go to $301 it is a guide and that's based on a family of four so that allows $75 per month per person so if you're a family of five like we are it would be $375 a month if you are a family of six, it will go up to $450 a month. If you haven't gone to our website and read about the $300 a month food challenge, I don't know whether I've put the link on yet or not, but I will make sure the link is down below. You can read about how it started and what the guidelines are and use it for yourself. It works and it can still be done. Now, it means that you have to meal plan. Well, you know what, guys? There are 371 meal plans in the Member Centre. In the Meal Plan Archive, there are 371 meal plans. If you can't find something out of all of those to create a meal plan of your own, 
I do not know what else I can do. Every month I post our meal plan to the member centre. I, every week I put a weekly meal plan of dinners in the newsletter. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Use one of those. You've got 371 to choose from. Now, over that 371, you will find there will be repeats like the roasts and pizza because we have pizza every, well, I don't, but the boys have pizza every Thursday night. They make a pizza for tea. That's a standard. But you know what? That piece pizza costs almost nothing because it uses the bits out of the fridge from Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, perhaps Sunday that haven't been used up. They will get put onto pizza and used for, for pizza night. So those pizzas are cheap, certainly cheaper than buying them, ordering them, getting them delivered or doing takeaway, cheaper even than the ones from the supermarket. There are a lot of meal plans <laughs> that you can choose from and those meal plans will help you work out your shopping list and help you with your grocery budget. The other thing that's important is when you write up your shopping list, do your meal plan and write up your shopping list, look for ingredients that do serve more than one purpose. You know, they can be used for two or three or four or five or six or more different recipes. Try not to buy single recipe ingredients because they, they are expensive. They will help to break your budget. Um, uh, sorry, I just noticed a comment. Um, guys, if you could all think of Delaney, she's not with us tonight. Um, But if you could just um, keep her in your prayers, that would be much appreciated. She's fine. She's got some other issues going on. Um, so start with your meal plan. Write up your shopping list. Make sure you're using multi-purpose ingredients. And then, you know what? You're just going to have to suck it up and shop around. You're going to have to go to Woolworths. You're going to have to go to Coles. You're going to have to go to Aldi, to IGA or Foodworks or Spa or whoever, the greengrocer and the butcher, maybe the deli, depending on what's on your list, to get the cheapest prices. Now, the best thing is we are blessed. We are so blessed to have such a variety of food retailers around us we're surrounded by them most of us are anyway certainly if you're in a capital city or a major city and on the east coast of australia the eastern side of australia you most definitely are spoilt for choice if you live rural or remote it's a little more difficult you might think but then it's slightly easier because you get to do bulk you get to plan ahead and do bulk shopping that works too. Um, what was I going to say? It's gone out of my mind. So, yes, you are going to have to put in a bit of effort and do some shopping around. Seriously, though, I can go to, I have the choice of two Aldis, two Coles, a Woolworths, two butchers, two really good green grocers and a deli, all within less than a five-minute drive of my home. So it might mean a bit more fiddling in dividing your list and going to shop A, shop B, shop C or whatever, but it's not going to take you that much longer and it will save you a lot of money. And if you calculate how much money you're saving, it's going to be worth it. Certainly worth your time. 
you just have to be prepared to put the effort in. And yes, I know we are all working. We all are tired. We all have other responsibilities. But shopping isn't a, isn't a recreational activity. It is a job. It is a chore that needs to be done. So don't think of shopping as taking you away from your other responsibilities. It is a responsibility on its own. It's as important as doing the washing or vacuuming or cleaning the toilet or weeding the garden. Shopping is a job. It is a chore. It is not a hobby. It is not recreation. It is not entertainment. So if you've been using it for those things or you think of it as not as important as something else, you need to change your attitude straight away because it is just as important as anything else you do in your home for your family. And if you don't do the grocery shopping, they don't eat, who's going to suffer then? So you need to make sure you understand shopping is really important and getting your grocery shopping habits into good habits is really important too. Okay. Now, let me just go up here. What does Kelly say? Um, Thanks to following you for many years, made mini pizzas for dinner and have leftovers for lunch, all less than $10 instead of $40 plus for Domino's. And I bet they were really nice too and everyone got what they liked. Um, I'm not a fan of pizza, really not a fan of pizza, because for years bought pizzas, takeaway pizzas from wherever were just awful. We do have a pizza shop not far from us that makes a reasonable pizza, but they're so expensive. They're like $18. So we don't have that very, very often. So well done, Kelly. And what does Fiona say? Fiona's still striving to keep the shopping down. Some requirements, demands and habits cost a lot. He's made some adjustments over time. It's okay. You're bringing it down. Again, the $300 a month, it's just a guide. It's the name of the challenge. The challenge should be the get your grocery bill down challenge. Because, like I said, everyone's circumstances are different. If you don't shop where I shop, when I shop, buy what I buy, use it the way I use it, pay what I pay for it, then your grocery bill will be different. That's just the fact. Um, what did Joy? Joy boy beef curry pieces instead of stewing steak. It had bones in it but was on special at $7 a kilo. Yeah, I got some lamb curry pieces um, earlier this year. Nearly drove me nuts because they had bones in them. Oh, what, seriously? Um, but I pressure canned it so the meat just falls off the bones so I can tip it out of the jar and just use it. It was really good. Um, Julia, where from? Don't understand that. Am uh, I missing something? Nope. I don't know what that is, Julia. You might need to put it down again for me if it's for me. Yeah, Delaney is missed. Fiona's getting another cheap grocery option soon. It has super special days. Fresh and save. Fresh and save. Do I know fresh and save? Don't know. Well done. Adjust your shopping so that you take advantage of the specials. Um, uh, Uh, good on you, Joy. Western quality meats. Yep, five kilos of 1.5 of bones. And then string steak to make up for it. Great service, great prices. Cool. Um, that's nice to hear, Joy. That's the problem. And if you go to our website, we do have a calculator for which, which what's better value, bone in or bone out. A bone in or boneless. Sorry. Um, so 
um, that's worth looking at too because often you think that um, one is going to be cheaper than the other but when you do the calculations it's not because bones don't always weigh the same uh, Fiona it's a Queensland chain that's expanding into New South Wales well done um, no Hannah's not visiting today she was down over the weekend she went home on Sunday she went home on Sunday so that was nice she was here with Lacey dog Lacey was cranky with us because we threw her routine out she was most upset if you ever seen a dog sulk it was hilarious usually Hannah lets herself in and Lacey comes racing in and jumps up on on me then jumps up on Wayne well I heard them coming so I opened the door well that was the wrong thing to do because she did not she couldn't jump on me because I wasn't where I was supposed to be she was like hmm. she was really sulky it was hilarious um so yep no Hannah's not visiting today but it would be nice if she was okay now i have done a 75 dollar a week meal plan that is i was going to recost it because you know what where did i put it it is still pretty much for what i buy it might come to about 77 dollars now and i first did this in 2017 so that's seven years ago um and it's still pretty much would cost roughly the same and that is because it's based on ingredients and ingredients give you options but not only give you options to make things they give you options to switch to different cheaper brands so if you're stuck on it stuck on buying the same same brand over and over try switching look for a cheaper brand honestly buy one and see if you like it if you don't like it then you know if you do like it and it's cheaper you're going to save yourself some money keep more money in your budget okay but this meal plan was for a week from sunday through saturday and it included breakfast morning tea lunch afternoon tea and dinner pretty pretty simple now breakfast on a Sunday I've got down as pancakes and syrup I don't use shaker pancakes I don't buy pancakes pancakes are flour and mine my recipe is a cup of self-raising flour a half a cup of milk and maybe a half a teaspoon of sugar whisk it up Heat your fry pan, preferably a heavy base one so it gets really hot. Wipe it over with some butter on a paper towel. Don't have it soaking in butter. Put your pancake batter in. When it bubbles, flip it over. Wait two minutes, take them off. They're done. Syrup. I noticed um, I was watching a small footprint Nissa did a shopping haul and she had um, maple syrup from Costco. That litre of maple syrup cost $20. Okay, pancake syrup, super easy to make. It's a cup of water, a teaspoon of, um, let me make sure I'm not going to lead you astray, teaspoon of vanilla and a cup of brown sugar you can cut the brown sugar back if you want to um, put it in a pot stir 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 till the sugar dissolves and then let it let it simmer for a few minutes till it thickens up like a syrup that's it done so um, it would cost you I can tell you exactly how much it costs uh, let me just do the thing here. Two cups of brown sugar. Okay. So if 
you doubled it, quadrupled it to get four cups to a litre, isn't there? So that will be 800 grams of brown sugar. And that would cost you, turn this on the fly, guys, but brown sugar, if you were to buy it, it would cost you dun, 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 $2.64. Your two, four teaspoons of vanilla would be around 80 cents. So $3.34 for a litre of pancake syrup as opposed to paying $20 for pancake syrup, maple syrup from Costco. Now, if you want to put maple flavoured syrup into it instead of vanilla you can but trust me it's not good it's not good at all so don't even try it vanilla vanilla is the way to go um now i've lost where i was so you can have pancakes for, for sunday break pancakes and syrup for sunday breakfast without having a huge impact on your grocery budget because if you're doing 300 dollars a month and you're spending 20 just on syrup, that leaves you 280 for everything else. When you're grocery shopping, feeding your family on a budget, you need to be a little bit clever. You need to be sharp. You need to pay attention to the little things like that. Um, what else have I got on there? Pita chips. Instead of buying corn chips, which are, I don't know, $4.65 or something for a bag of corn chips you can buy um pita bread a pack of pita bread which is about two dollars something i think not on sale if it's on sale it's even cheaper um okay it's so three dollars sixty for 500 grams that makes a lot of pita chips in fact, it makes more pita chips than my family can eat in a month. They are really good. If you want to know how to do them, go to our website, go to cheapskatesclub.net and type pita chips in the search at the top right of the screen. Lots of options for seasonings on them, but they're really easy to do. And if you have the oven on, perhaps you've got the oven on to do a roast or you're baking cakes or something, pop a tray in and use the heat or if something's come out pop a tray in close the door and let the residual heat dry them for you they are really really cheap they are inexpensive but they're so tasty i prefer them just plain a little spritz them with a little bit of i like olive oil because i like the flavor but you can use any oil and salt and i'm not a fan of salt but sea salt i can tolerate and i like them like that but you could make parmesan chips. You could do um, chili. You can do curry. You can do herbed. You can do whatever you like. But they are really, really cheap. You will get a lot of pita chips for $3.60 from one pack of um, bread. Lebanese bread we use really really worthwhile doing again that won't have a big impact on your grocery budget as opposed to buying you know a pack a week of $4.60 corn chips that's 16 $19.20 so there you are you're down $40 out of your $300 a month anyway. Make the change. Little changes add up to heaps. Think about um, the way you do things. When you do your meal plan, meal plan it, but then think about how you can make it cheaper. I've got a lot about making meals cheaper on our website. 
we've done videos about making meals cheaper and how we can do that. A tin of baked beans can stretch mints. Now, I'm not a fan of baked beans on toast or on a potato or whatever, but if they are whizzed up, they, they resemble the granules, that's what they're called, of mints. And if you put them into a tomato-based mince dish or into a meat pie, a gravy-based dish, you don't know they're there. But for a fraction, you can halve your mints for a fraction of the cost. You will halve, the, halve your mints, add a tin of baked beans, and you've got the equivalent of double the mint quantity of mints. I didn't explain that very well anyway, but I think you know what I mean. You need to be savvy to do these things. And that's why I'm saying we can do it. Even in April, April 2024, we can still, the $300 a month food challenge still works and it can still be done. All right. Um... Um, it went out at 6.30, it's all gone because I checked and it was on our Facebook page too and the Facebook group. Um, just, just so you know, I didn't not send it, I did. Um, okay, just wondering if you can re-add to the newsletter meal plan the fruit bowl and cake slices. I stopped adding them because why did I stop adding them? I have to think. I stopped adding them because someone complained repeatedly for weeks about um, cakes and biscuits and treats and things and, and then apparently the fruit I buy isn't good. I don't know. So I stopped adding them, but I can put it back for you. I will say, though, that they're often, um, these days, I don't do a lot of baking anymore. We've gone off sweets so much. So not a lot of cakes or biscuits or slices being made. But every week we have fruit. This week we've got apples because apples were cheap, bananas because bananas were cheap, mandarins because mandarins were cheap. Mandarins were a dollar a kilo, so I big bag of Mandy's came home, um, bananas, it was a big box of bananas, worked out to 80 cents a kilo, so we'll be bananaed out, and the apples were only $2 a kilo, so a bag of apples, not quite so big, but nice apples came home. Now, for us to have um, two pieces of fruit, a day each or two serves of fruit a day each that's um eight serves a day or 56 serves a week so just in case someone's wondering i do work it out like that i will count out how much i need of each thing um unless i'm buying the bulk boxes the 15 kilos of bananas or whatever um to make sure that we have enough to last the week, that everyone gets their two pieces of fruit a day. I'm kind of, um, I, it's something I've done since the kids were little. We just make sure we have our two serves of fruit a day. And it's easy in summer because you've got watermelon and rock melon and plums and um, peaches and nectarines and yummy things like that, strawberries raspberries, all that sort of thing. But in winter, it gets a bit trickier. Um, so. Joy used the bones for stock. Okay. So I will try and do that. I will make a note. Otherwise, I'll forget. 
I'll have to go back in and add it. Um, and see what's there. Um, if I do most baking I do these days is fruit cake or banana cake. It'll be for a while. <laughs> got bananas um okay joy chopped up the bones and used them for stock yes what brand is three dollars something that you just checked on sorry um brown sugar brown sugar at coles was what i was checking um baked beans yes baked beans are excellent in taco mints baked beans uh a staple in my haystack recipe and in fact I often leave the mints out and just do baked beans for, uh, for haystacks um, super simple uh, what am I doing um, the link didn't work on Facebook why did the link not work on Facebook should be the same okay okay no i don't know either cheryl it's been one of those days um jane found me okay fiona i bake make a lot of snacks for your son and grandkids yep we don't always get the fruit in cauliflower and other things are great for vitamin c cauliflower is really expensive at the moment lettuce were five dollars each the other day that's just ridiculous and I'm really sorry, but lettuce grows in Victoria all year round. It slows down in the cooler weather, but it still grows. So it is just ridiculous. $2 meal thread in the forum, $2 recipes in the recipe um, file too. Okay. Now, um, back to this meal plan. Where did I lose it? Muffins, muffins are cheap. They don't have to be fancy. And with the price of chopped chips and cocoa, ours are going to be plain for quite a while, I would imagine. Muffins are really good for using up sad apples. You've got an apple in the fruit bowl that needs to be used up. Chop it up, stir it through your muffin batter. Um, bananas, strawberries, whatever, anything that looks a bit sad in the fruit bowl, make orange muffins. I often, when we've got plenty of oranges off the trees, will use orange juice instead of milk in cake batter. Add the zest for um, a little more flavour. It works. Or do the, the whole orange cake. And the recipes, the recipes on the website, guys. It's really simple, and it uses one whole orange. And it's really delicious and it's tasty and there's no waste. And when I say the whole orange, it is the whole orange. Um, I want to talk about eggs because people complain that eggs are expensive. And if you're just going to, if you're just going to use them for baking and stuff, I suppose they are. But eggs as a protein source, as a source of really good vitamins and minerals for you, are very inexpensive even five dollars even if you're buying the super expensive incredibly overrated organic ones that are you know 12 13 15 dollars a dozen which is just stupid um they are still an excellent source of protein full of vitamins and they will keep you healthy and i know that there's um the Heart Foundation has revamped their thing to say you can have four eggs a week now instead of just one or two. But eggs, if you watch your other, if you're not having any other animal fats, you're being very careful with your diet, eggs are excellent for you. And they are versatile. They are really versatile. They make scrambled eggs, quiche, um, What was it? Impossible pies. I was going to say puff balloons, but puff balloons are the other things. Little puffy um, mini egg things. I don't know what they're called. I've forgotten. 
but it's pretty much like a beat the egg like you do for scrambled egg add a little bit of milk salt pepper and then you can put in whatever you've got um, tomato um, onion capsicum that was the other thing i put in the zucchini slice at the weekend capsicum um, mushrooms whatever and i grease the uh, muffin pans and put them in the muffin tins and let them they puff up they sort of puff up and they can be eaten hot or cold um so they're not they're not expensive and they're really quite um good for you um what else have i got on here lunches you know sandwiches wraps salad bowls coming into winter it can be soup or, or stews fried rice whatever and then dinners I don't give my meals fancy names I know people go and call them fancy names but risoles are risoles guys you can call them whatever you like but a risole is a risole so but they're inexpensive I stretch them I use mints and I put in an equivalent amount of rolled oats to stretch the results the mixture to get more out of them um, spag bowl is inexpensive uh, we've covered pizza tuna casserole tuna not as bad as um, not as bad as salmon but oh my gosh salmon nine dollars sixty a tin the other day I nearly died um, but tuna is inexpensive very flavorful very very good for you goes a long way fish cakes tuna casserole tuna surprise curry tuna slice um i'm not a fan of it in quiche but hannah likes it in a quiche um tuna salad there's so many things you can do with a tin of tuna and it's i think the big tin is still under five dollars at aldi it was last time i looked so that's not too bad my aim for um the meat component of our meals is for it to not be more than five dollars so and i it's been that for a long time and i like it's the challenge now to try and stick to it and stick to the keep it to the five dollars um i do that pretty much by making sure that leftovers become another meal bones become stock for soup or whatever um, nothing gets wasted so the other things that you need to do um, to watch things like the brands that you buy choose the cheapest choose the cheapest generic Generic is a brand. Someone somewhere had to make it. A, a manufacturer somewhere had to make it. Often they will be rebranded brand names of things. So, especially in Australia, we don't have a lot of, you know, our manufacturers are limited. Um, so think of it that way. And they may not be the same all the time because they could be end of runs or... Um, trial recipes or whatever it's all right as long as it's you know inexpensive and you like it does it really matter no um but before you do that unit price always check your unit price because guess what sometimes the cheap one isn't always the cheapest just saying like I, you know people shop at Costco just saying just because they say well they don't actually say they're cheap doesn't mean they actually are know your unit prices um, remember portion control really important a serve of vegetables is half a cup so half a cup of peas half a cup of carrots half a cup of collie or broccoli or whatever that's a serve of veggies um serve of meat is a 150 to 180 grams piece of red meat piece about the size of the palm of your hand um chicken same piece about the size of the palm of, the palm of your hand it's about 120 to 130 grams um i know that 
we go out and you go, you go to a, a pub for a meal and the chicken palm is bigger than the plate well that's just stupid sorry that's just stupid so remember portion control it's really important for your budget but for your health too um cook from scratch it honestly doesn't take any longer to cook a meal from scratch than it does to go through the menu ring up order it or go online and order it wait for it to be allocated to a driver wait for the driver to drop off 10 other things on the way to your house so by the time it gets to your house it's cold you can easily cook from scratch you can get dinner on the table in easily under 20 minutes half an hour if you're a bit of a slow poke or got something quite elaborate it's easy to do you can cook from scratch if you're not sure about it learn i had to i had to learn and there's plenty of really good cooking video uh, youtubers out there if you want to watch them for basics really simple choose simple recipes don't you know don't do anything elaborate if you're just starting if you're not sure how to cook from scratch learn how to do a roast a roast chicken and a piece of beef would be really good learn how to bake some vegetables learn how to steam veggies um learn how to cook eggs boiled poached fried scrambled learn how to make an omelette pie filling i'd say pastry but i'm not good at pastry either so if you have to resort to bought pastry i'm right there with you um pie filling learn to make a meat pie filling meat pie filling you need minimal meat few veggies gravy you can make it taste the way you want it to pies are inexpensive they don't have to be expensive soup it's not hard to make a soup i know people think it is and that you need lots of um you need a pressure cooker or you need a, a thermomix no you don't you just need a saucepan and a heat sauce some veggies some water a few seasonings if you've got some meat perfect if you've got stock even better soup is easy we've talked about making your shopping list doing your shopping list after you do your meal plan but once you've done it stick to it so before you leave home make sure your shopping list is right make sure you've got everything on it that you need because you don't want to go back to the shops for another week or fortnight or month depending on how often you shop if you could switch to monthly shopping it's a dream you would love it and then shop around and we've covered that too you do have to do it but if you were going to buy a car you'd shop around if you're going to buy a house you shop around you look at a few you look test out look for prices do the comparisons do it with your groceries too and it's as it's really easy Woolies and Coles both have websites that um, bring up prices and they have unit prices on them Aldi doesn't it's a bit of a bummer Costco doesn't yeah. IGA I think has a really good website so you can compare your prices so that you know what to buy at Woolworths, what to buy at Coles, what to buy at Aldi or wherever. No one store is ever going to have the lowest prices on everything all the time. It's just not going to happen. That's um, competition. So it's up to us to find the lowest prices for us all right now over on our website over at the cheapskatesclub.net under the under the um saving money tab at the top if you click on that it will go down to um 
tip sheets. In there, I've got three that might help you stick to your $300 a month grocery budget. Well, there are three that stand out to me. One is from ready-made to homemade. So looking at the bought product and mooing it. Um, homemade yogurt. Seriously, the price of yogurt is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it's so simple to make. We go through a lot of yogurt. I go through a lot of yogurt. I love yogurt. Um, the other one is simple, a tip sheet called Simple Substitutes. So that if you've got something on your meal plan and it's only for one recipe, look on the substitute list and see what else, what you can substitute for and see if you have that ingredient or one of those ingredients so that you're not wasting money on one ingredient that will only do one recipe because that's going to bust your budget too. And then there's some articles in the article um, archive. Um, there's the Bare Bones Grocery Challenge meal plan. Um, the tortilla chips, all mixed up tortilla chips, um, step by step to make those. What else did I tell you about? I didn't write it down and I was waffling on. There's a lot in there. Um, there's also a lot of how-tos, how to make um, brown sugar, how to make instant pudding mix, how to make peanut butter, how to make um, pineapple vinegar. Really easy, guys. Or apple cider vinegar. Really easy. You don't have to buy them. You can make them. Fruit leathers. Oh, my kids always wanted those roll-ups when they were at school. They were really expensive back then. I have no idea what they cost now. And for a treat, they they are fine. I wouldn't be putting them in a lunchbox every day or just handing them out willy-nilly because even if they are just fruit, it's concentrated fruit, which means it's concentrated sugar. So not necessarily good for them. But make your own. <laughs> they, are, they are really easy to make and you don't need a dehydrator to do it. You can do it in the oven. So um, how to cook the perfect scrambled eggs. There you go. What else have I got? Um, homemade egg substitutes, your moo egg substitutes. There's a lot of people that don't have eggs in their diet, can't tolerate them for whatever reason and need the egg substitutes. You can buy them egg substitute, but you will pay for it. There are lots of things that you can use that... Um, Make a great substitute. Um, corn flour. Two, two tablespoons of corn flour is the equivalent of one egg. So mix it with a tablespoon of water. You've got the equivalent of one egg. Um, arrowroot. Same deal. Two tablespoons of arrowroot to a tablespoon of water is the equivalent of one egg. Um, one banana. One mashed banana. In a cake batter, the equivalent of one egg. If you don't have eggs or you can't tolerate eggs, but you have bananas, I've got plenty of bananas, you can use banana in place of eggs. There's lots of things you can do. Um, you can make your own uh, low cholesterol egg substitute. It's pretty simple. You're using um, non-fat milk powder um, and egg whites pretty much easy so you don't want to eat the yolks you can do that use the yolks for uh lemon butter if only we could get butter on sale would that not be just delightful all right they've got another chip sheet that's cooking substitutes to cut grocery costs okay then you've got um the forever foods list always important to know how long something's going to last uh, all sorts of things in the article archive there are 
gazillions of things that will save you on your grocery budget so you can stick to the $300 a month food plan okay just quickly let me go back and see what we've got um, what brand Lebanese bread um, it's just the um, it's the one in the orange packet I, can't, I don't know what it's called um, I've, I've been buying it for gazillion years Fiona sorry wants to know what brand Lebanese bread for the pita chips but any, any Lebanese bread will do just get your cheapest one use mountain bread if mountain bread is cheaper use mountain bread um, if tortillas are cheaper use tortillas and make tortilla chips use whichever one is cheapest uh, fairy cakes I like fairy cakes with jam or lemon butter I would go for the lemon butter um, they are nice and if you use my go to one bowl cake recipe super cheap um, Joy makes the all brand date loaf yes I haven't made that in ages Joy I used to make it all the time for Wayne um Banana muffins, orange cake, yep. Um, Jane's doing more fishing, so lots of fresh fish. Well, that's a huge, huge money saver for you. Um, homegrown salad, yes, because you're in your growing season. How nice. It will help. Will help. Joy, good point, Joy. If you can get to an egg farm, Joy pays $8.50 for a tray of 30 eggs. And they are nice eggs, I know, because she's got some for me in the past. They are really good eggs. Um, I don't have an egg farm within a reasonable travelling distance of me, or I would be doing that. Um, uh, so... Um, yep Fiona uses yogurt for dough I use yogurt in place of sour cream don't buy sour cream anymore yogurt does the same job and if I let it drain and make it a little bit thicker it's just as nice um, uh, yeah chocolate pudding oh that's nice granny made yoga it's ah, really good some yogurt yeah add some eggs when I make a stirred custard Jane I always put an egg in a stirred custard even if it's just for us for a dessert but when the kids were sick they're little and sick I would make a custard a stirred custard for them and I always always put egg in it they didn't know I was beating an egg and cooked it up for them just for the extra nutrition um, yep joy had meat pie um, and okay you certainly can Fiona you certainly can you don't need to um, you don't need to buy it yeah think outside the square just because we call them pita chips doesn't mean they have to be made from pita bread <laughs> all right so I'm thinking everyone knows how to um, stick to their grocery budget be it $300 a month or $450 a month or $200 a month it doesn't matter it's your grocery budget the aim of the challenge 
is to encourage you to get your bill down as low as it can go without you being miserable. Nobody wants to be miserable. Food is really important. Um, it makes us feel good. We need it to survive, but it makes us feel good. So it's important that we understand that when we're planning our grocery budget, because we could end up and be really awfully stingy and live on, you know, boil three cabbage leaves and call it cabbage soup um, and feed that to our families and then a cabbage would last for six months. But that's not the point of the challenge. The aim of the challenge is to encourage you to work on getting your grocery, grocery bill down to a level that suits you. It doesn't have to suit me. It doesn't have to suit your next door neighbour or your brother or your sister or your mother or anyone else. It only has to suit you and you have to be happy with it. If it's putting you in debt, then you need to work on it. If you just like to trim it back a bit so you've got a little free up cash for something else, you know what to do. But I will put the links to the $300 a month food challenge on our website underneath me and um, to the articles and the chip sheets and we'll see, see how you go from there. But they're all there for you to um, use. Okay, now it is 8.37, so I am going to go. It's been a busy day, a busy, busy day. Um, I'll remember to add the fruit bowl and cake tin back into the newsletter for you. Although there probably won't be a cake tin this week because I haven't done any baking. <laughs> oh, other than no, that, you don't count the zucchini pie in the cake tin. Um, so I'll add those in for you. But remember, the recipe file is there for you to use. You just log in and go to it. Choose which section you want to go to. It'll tell you how many recipes are in it. Go through them. See which ones you like. Try them all. Most of them have been, um, some of them are mine. Most of them have been contributed by other cheapskaters. So you know they'll work. It's entirely up to you. The best part is, most of them can be adapted to suit other diets too. So swap out um, low-fat marge for butter or um, low-fat milk for full cream milk or whatever. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you have liked tonight's video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Even with all our debacle of not knowing where to go or how we ended up on my other channel, I don't know. Um neither do you if you're not already subscribed i was gonna say if you're not already you can subscribe to home among the gum trees um that's fine happy to have you but um <laughs> the zucchini slices in the recipe file um uh, banana breads in the recipe file muffins are in the recipe file they're all there um so now i've lost myself i'll be back next week with another live show for you that hopefully will be on the right channel i don't know hopefully next tuesday won't be as traumatic as today was okay crazy cake yes crazy cake is in the recipe file too and it's in the members forum under joy's joy i think has created a, a chat for it okay i will see you all next week but until then have fun cheapskating guys bye